oftentimes it's not necessarily what I'm saying. You may have heard it before, but it's the fact that I am saying it in a time where really we're being persecuted for doing just about anything that even relates to Christ, preaching, teaching, even yeah. saying the name of the Lord outside Amen. of these houses. Amen. You know. And I was looking on Facebook earlier today, and hey, if this is true in Idaho, I believe either the governor or mayor was talking about if you can't, uh, if, if the pastors and ministers and different religious organizations won't perform gay marriages, they throw you in jail and things like that. And just, just this blatant refusal to even try to adhere to what God has preached and teached through the words of the gospel. And if that's the case, I am getting into a can of worms, sure. But as I was praying up when we were driving up here, it seemed like everything tries to come against us. I'm going to fight. I'm going to press on. And I pray that each of you will pray with me and that we'll fight and get through all of these problems together. Because soon and very soon, the Lord is coming back. Can I get yeah. it? Amen. 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 Well, with all that said, I'm going to try and start out with uh, Acts chapter 2, starting with verses 1 through 4. Again, like I say, We've heard these verses several times before, and you're probably going to hear them several times again, if not from me, from somebody else. But when you find it, if you please stand for the reading of God's Word, I appreciate it. Starting with verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'd like to title tonight's message, Taking the Next Step in Your Walk with God. Would you please pray with me? <coughs> Because look at where the world has gotten to 
just within a short amount of time. And it's because the examples the world sees right now, the examples of Christianity that the world is seeing right now, it's not the example that we ourselves are supposed to live up to. The, what the Word of God says, it's very direct. It, there's some parables, sure. There's some things that you have to think about. But the Word of God is very direct in its point that we are to be Christ-like. Yeah. Now, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest Amen. thing you're ever going to do. But it's something you've got to do if you plan to make it to Bless the him. other side. Amen. Amen. Bless him. Now, when I was in school, I had all kinds of friends. I used to say that my group was the United Nations and Teenage Forum. We had people of all kinds of nationalities just within my particular group. Japanese, Ethiopian, I, I was part Native American, whatever other mix. Same with my friends. We're just all kinds of mixes all through there. We had all different kinds of cultures. We had all kinds of ideas about life and what we were meant to do after we got out of school, after we moved on. I say all that because for 15 years I let my life just be wrapped up in sin. And so for the longest time, that's what my friends saw. Until the day I got saved. Thank God it's coming up soon. The anniversary is actually the same day of my parents' anniversary. Praise God. And that will be nine years, I believe, now. And it's amen. Amen. Trust me. I, I don't want to think about what I could have been because, see, there's a lot of things people don't know I did. And that's going to stay that way. It's between me and God because they're awful things. But that's just maybe if the Lord leaves me, I can share some of that sometime. But. They saw me at my worst, and on that day that I finally changed, and I finally gave my life over to God, that was probably one of the most powerful blessings I ever experienced. And the next day, after I gave my life to God, this girl that I used to hang out with, and for lack of a better term, she was just kind of a little too friendly. Let's just put it that way. She was. It was easy to see why I could find myself hanging around with her. But I, I told her about getting saved. And, you know, the Lord's called us to do a lot of great things, but sometimes after we get saved, like I said, we kind of just sit still sometimes. We kind of get, we, we get to that plateau. You know, we've been climbing a mountain, we've been climbing a mountain. We get to that plateau, and then we see the next mountain ahead of us, and it looks twice as tall as where we just climbed. And so, we kind of just think, ah, maybe I just need to rest just a minute. Let me just sit down for just a minute. Let me just rest. And, you know, I was telling her that I got saved. And the first thing she says, oh, you just only now got saved? Kind of threw me back a little bit. What are you talking about? Oh, I got baptized when I was four years old. Or to some effect, that's what she was saying. Oh, I went to church one time. And to, to the effect, that was her idea of salvation. But I saw the way her life I saw the way my life was. I was influencing her and her me. That was her idea of salvation. And right there, it just made a lasting impression. Man, that, I, I got to be better than that. I can't let people think that salvation is merely getting water sprayed on your head when you're four years old. No, salvation has got to be something stronger, something deeper than that, something you can feel because I had to make a total 360 from what I was because what I was was vile not only to, I'm sure, anyone that was around me, but it was vile to me, and I know it was vile to God. And I cannot let myself get back into the world. I cannot even Amen. just dance with it a little bit. I can't even just touch it. I don't want it because look at the example the world has of Christianity. I saw something recently where they were talking about you believe in, are you against gay marriage because of your belief in the Bible? And they went on down the list and says, oh, what about that tattoo you got Oh, what about the cigarette you got in your mouth? Oh, about what, what are you, that lie you just told? And that's the example they see. And so, to make all this story come back around, I was talking to her about it, and, and, and my friends, I, I kept trying to tell them about God, and I kept talking to them, but there was one unfortunate mistake I made in all this, is that I myself wasn't reading the Word as much as I needed to. I myself... Yes, I was saved. Yes, I was trying to work for God. But, like I said, the Word is very direct. It tells you what you're supposed to do if you'll just follow it. Yeah. Problem was, I wasn't following it as closely as I needed to be. 
And like I said, for 15 years, I let my life be wrapped in sin. And finally, when I turned it around, you know, that should, that should be great. That's a step in the right direction. And yeah, it was. But there's more to it. Because, see, the rest of my high school career, there would be those occasions where a question would come up. Dad asked me about, why are you praying over your food or lunch or something like that. Some just thing I wasn't even thinking about. I've been raised up doing. And they had a question, and I had no solid foundation to even answer them back on. Why? Because I wasn't doing my part. And why witnessing is such a powerful component is because that same girl I used to hang out with, she now has two kids, and I, I don't even know if they have the same father. There is no father that I even know. That friend that was my best friend, he came to church one time. To this day, I think he's still an atheist as much as we talk. One time, I really felt like that was his chance to get saved. And since then, he's moved off to Texas. I have no way of really talking to him now. It burdens me because I know there was so much I could have done at one time if I would only have just read the Word, if I had only had just prayed, if I had only just taken that time to really <coughs> dig deep in what God has in store for each of us, if we would but just take a hold of His promises, take a hold of all those things that He's guaranteed us will happen if we would just follow Him. Amen. But that's just it. I didn't do it. And so now I've got to go on. And I've got to remember that. Every day of my life, if I never see them again, if they die and they go to hell, I've got to remember that. That's something that's going to be on me. Because I could have done more and I should have done more. And I didn't. Jonah is one of the characters. I call him a character. He's not a character as a fable, but he's an example I thought of. Everything you should do as a witness, and everything you really shouldn't do. God had called him to go out to Nineveh. And he said, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to just do away with them. These people are wicked. He didn't like that. Nineveh, they were an enemy. There were people he didn't like. He, he cared less about them. Jonah, he didn't want to do it. So what's he do? He goes and runs. He goes to Tarshish and he tries to run away. God sends a powerful storm that just rocks the ship. And everyone in it, they, they just, they're praying to anything and everything they can think of. Jonas, he's down there, he's down there asleep. They wake him up and say, pray to your God, pray to your God. We got to find out what's going on. Turns out that Jonah is the one at fault. Throw him overboard. He gets swallowed by a fish. At the bottom of the sea for three days, he prays and returns back on the God. So that fish finally comes out, spits him on land, and he goes to Nineveh. He finally preaches. And when he does preach, when he does teach, what happens? The whole nation turns back around. They turn to God. And so God spares him. God spares him. But that wasn't good enough for Jonah. Jonah's like, you spared him? I wanted you to destroy him. I wanted to see this happen. So he just goes and cries about it. God sends a plant in order to wake up Jonah. And it got me thinking how that kind of parallels my story. You see, I got saved and I had a calling, just as Jonah had. But instead of going through my calling, I let those same friends, a little bit of their influence, I let them come back into me. I, 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 I wasn't reading my word. I was kind of, I wasn't trying to fight against God, but I was at the same time. I wasn't trying to be disobedient, but at the same time, I was. Just by the fact that I wasn't doing what I should have been doing. And so I had... Many times where I had to pray, there was many times where I had to say, God, help me so I can get past this. Help me so I can move forward. Just as Jonah did. He was at the bottom of the sea three days. A great fish. And just like Jonah, God forgave me. God gave me another chance. He's 
give me several second chances. And in every one of those second chances, I went out and maybe I did something great. Maybe I did something wonderful for the Lord. Whatever the case. I'm not saying that I'm great, but just saying it was great because God did something powerful through me. And I thank Him for it. I really appreciate all that He's allowed me to do because I wouldn't be here today without God. Amen. 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 And so something wonderful would happen. But instead of rejoicing over all the wonderful blessings of God, I find myself not too long after having the feet kicked right out from under me again. Why? Because I didn't have that foundation to lean on. Sure, I made progress, but for every one step forward, I was taking two steps back. Because I wasn't reading, I wasn't praying, I wasn't doing all that I needed to do to take that next step. And so like I said, there was many of my friends that I potentially could have reached because these were people, like I said, I used to be the bad influence. Just to give you a, a, a small tidbit of the things I used to do, just before I was 15, I was already drinking, I'd already tried smoking, I had connections to get any kind of drug or whatever you want. I just was, I didn't get around to it. Not only that, I told lies like drinking water. I mean, there's not a thing. I think I told anyone that was completely honest at any time. I got top cop for shoplifting amongst a multitude of different things. I really would prefer not to talk about because for one, they're disgusting. Just plain disgusting. It's not sugarcoating it. It's just plain disgusting. That's the kind of things I was influencing. Them. That's the kind of things I saw. And sure, I got turned around, but I didn't put enough effort, I feel. It's like, oh, you're being too hard on yourself. You're being too hard on yourself. But if they're going to die and go to hell, I need to put a little bit more effort in it because there's no one else at home teaching them what's right and what's wrong. All they see is what, I, what I'm doing when I get there, when I get to school, when I got to wherever I was going. If they were going to see anything from God, if they were going to see or hear anything about God, it was what I was doing. There, that's a lot of burden, but God is trying to test us. God is trying to give us a chance to take that next step so that maybe we can all be in heaven one day. Amen. God did not intend for you to go to hell. God did not intend for your friends or your family to go to hell. The only one that sends anyone to hell is the person strong witness. Because, see, sometimes God's going to take a big... He's going to move His hand one really big time. Like I said, John had run. He'd run down to Tarshish. He tried to get on the ship. He was trying to flee. God wasn't having none of that. God's plan is going to happen one way or the other, whether you like it or not. It's just how it is. God's hand moved on that ship. My friends, they're in all kinds of places. I don't know where they're at. They're nowhere near me. I can see them on Facebook occasionally. But Facebook, it does some good. But there's certain things you can't do on Facebook, no matter how hard you try. God is going to work. God is going to move. We have got to be powerful witnesses because Bless there's you, too Jesus. many people. There's just too Bless many you. people you, out there who are so, so very long. And it's sad. It's almost depressing. I have joy in the Lord, but it can be depressing. It can weigh you down. It can weigh your mind down. It can weigh your heart down to the point where you just don't think you can stand. I think my problems are tough, but at least I got God in my life. Think about someone else who's got it just as bad and worse, who hasn't got God in their life. Who are they going to turn to? I have got to do as everything that I possibly can. Witness. Second point, talking about faith. Faith is something we all can really easily say we have. But then when it really gets tough, it's nowhere to be found sometimes. And there's many examples of faith in the Bible. And as I try to find it on my tablet, just where I have it, 
this tablet's wonderful because I can find Bible verses in like two seconds. But it's got fine print and I got bad eyes. So anyway. But faith. I have plenty of faith when everything's going all right. I had plenty of faith before I saw the torrential downpour in the rain. Uh, making me believe, oh, we're going to have a great turnout. I had plenty of faith until the rain came, until Granny started having some problems, until I saw the time ticking off the clock. Oh, my faith. Where is my faith all of a sudden? I'm coming here to preach the sermon. I, I, I tell you what, there, there is no point in your life where your faith cannot be tested. There is no point in your journey with God when the devil's going to automatically just lay down and say, okay, you got it. It's all good. <laughs> Go ahead. Take your time. I'll wait. Amen. Yeah. The only people who don't get trials and burdens are usually the ones who are the farthest away from the gospel, farthest away from God. Amen. The only reason I think I got caught shoplifting that one time is because of God's hand. Because Satan, he was just going to let me keep going and keep going and keep going. It wasn't the devil trying to get me in trouble. It wasn't the devil trying to do these things. It wasn't the devil who was trying to point me to the house of the Lord. It wasn't him doing it. He was just going to let me continue on. So the devil's going to fight you. That's why our faith needs to be like concrete. That faith has got to be stronger than it's ever been before. Like I said, I'm starting to preach right now. This is just days after same sex as law of the land, quote unquote. If my faith is not strong now, it's gotta it's gotta get there because yeah. there are there's gonna be dark days ahead. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I I've I've talked teens sometimes and sometimes I get in a topic like this where it just feels like we're all just all the energy's getting sucked right out in the vacuum. And you know, teens they like to talk and they like to say about anything in their mind that pops up first. And so they like to be happy, they like to be laughing, they like to be goofy until they have a bad day and then everybody has a bad day. And then, and so I've taught lessons like this and I've taught little sermonettes that I've created like that. And each time, it's just like they don't, they don't listen to it. It's like, <laughs> you can see it. You can't see it on their face. You can almost hear it coming out of their mind. It's like what they're thinking. But the fact is, we got to hear some more about what's yet to come. We've got to hear more about what eternity will be for those who are either saved or unsaved. There is no gray area. Just as important as it is to witness, it's important to have faith because, like I said, when trials and tribulations come, we need to have a backbone. We need to have our feet planted in the ground, ready for whatever is about to hit us. I chose the example Paul because Paul had, in my opinion, one of the greatest turnarounds. He was, he was one of the most fear people by Christians. I mean, he was going out. He was looking to kill any and all. He was trying to find them all. He was hunting them down, but he made a complete 360. But, just like each and every one of us, he had to face just a multitude of problems. He had to go one after the other. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 3, says, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven. Fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Right here, he had been persecuting the church so much. God just took his life and it just turned him around and turned him around. And when he did so, he got up and he, he really fought. He really moved forward. He really went out and started to preach with this fire and this, this real passion. But then we go over to chapter 14 want to turn with me, you can. And we're going to read verses 19 and 20. If you find 
the same man. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persecuted the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. He got stoned. Not the kind of smoke way where you think you're Cheech and Chong or something like that. No, he got stoned by getting hit with rocks in the face, all over the body, to the point where the people thought he was dead. This man who had been working for God, who had been doing everything in his power to serve God, he was getting met with rocks to the face. But verse 20 says, How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. I don't know about you, but if I got hit with rocks to the point where I thought, where people thought I was dead, I'd be going to the hospital. I'm just guaranteeing you that. I'd probably be going to the hospital. Now, he got up, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And then verse 21, and when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch. The same ones that were persecuting him, he just went right back to them. Praise God. That takes faith. I don't know about you, but if we're going to go into the lion's den, we need to be holding on to something stronger than ourselves. When I went into places with friends or with whomever I am, it's easy to get tied up in whatever they're doing. It's easy. Like, like I said, my best friend, he came to church one time. He sat on the front row during the Brown family revival. He saw everything. It didn't change him. Maybe it did something inside that I didn't see, and I pray that something will happen one day. But for the moment, I haven't seen it. And so a few times we used to hang out. We'd go to some restaurant or whatever. As soon as, he as, as soon as he turned 21, all he wanted was to get his hand on some booze. He wanted to get some kind of drink. It really didn't matter what. He already, he just, that's what he wanted. Because we used to do that when we were 15 years old in the middle of chorus class. That's what we used to do. That's what he wanted. So he'd drink. He'd have it right there. I hanging out drastically dropped. I, I couldn't hang out with him much anymore. Why? Because... Certain memories started coming back to the front of my head. Certain things I used to do started to peek out. Things I thought I had forgotten and moved on about. Like I said, Satan isn't done until we're dead. Satan is not finished trying to fight us. But that's where faith comes in. See, that's where faith comes in. Yeah, he's doing that. But look at what all he has to go through. Whenever he's in trouble, whenever he's in a trial, who does he have to turn to? I have something so much stronger. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've got something I can turn to. I've got something to hold on to. There is nothing that the world can throw at me. There is nothing at all the world can throw at me that I can't stand up to. Because if Paul... Preaching the gospel can get stoned to the point of death, get up, leave, and go back to the same ones who were attacking him. I can do all things. Amen. Christ. Right. Strength us me. We've got to have faith. If you want to take that next step in your walk with God, not only do you have to tell people, when you have the opportunity, tell people. I, I used to be shy. Well, not quite so much anymore. Thank God. Because I, I, I used to, you know, I, there was an opportunity I had sometimes and I just wouldn't take it. I was like, oh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to start nothing. I invited three or four people the other week just in casual conversation, not even thinking about it. When all of this rain and everything and it looked like tonight could be a real bad night, someone told me, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to be there. Well, he's sitting right back there. He actually made it. He knows who he is. <laughs> Not only that, I see how many is here. I think we count about 30, 31 now. Everyone come in. I mean, honestly, you know, it kind of works on you when you see all these things start to happen. Yeah. It works on you a lot. It works on your mind. You're thinking, is this a sign from God? Maybe this isn't the right night. But then you get here, and you just 
hold on. You don't give up. It, it works on you. And so questions try to start in your mind. Things start to try and happen. But you just keep holding on. You keep expecting when you get to the house, it's all going to be okay. You get close to the master, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you could go through all the worst trials in the world. The one with the issue of blood, she went through it for a long, long time until she finally pressed through it. She got to the master. She had enough faith that if I could just touch the hem of his garment, yes, she'd be healed. And she was. That's faith in action right there. That's faith that is just unmovable. That's whenever the storms of life come against you. That's having your feet planted. I'm 266 pounds. It takes a lot to take me off my feet. But I tell you what, sometimes trials get hard. They get tough. Physical toughness doesn't mean anything when you're fighting the devil sometimes. I'm trying to promise you that. Amen. But I tell you what, God is so much stronger. He's got so much more power. He is so much more able. There is nothing impossible with God. That is faith. That is faith. It's such a wonderful thing. And then the third point I had, I'm hoping that I'm, I don't have any kind of time or anything where I can see. Oh, I'm not doing too bad. It's 827, so I'll try and wrap up. But the third point I wanted to make was about Someone I chose for obedience is really someone who, for lack of a better word, just was disobedient. I chose Saul. All right. I chose Saul because sometimes the best example of what to do is having an example of what not to do. Because as long as you don't do that, you at least have a chance of getting direction. Obedience is something, like I said, I had to learn by doing everything the wrong way sometimes. I know my last name is right, but I do a lot of things wrong sometimes. And the best experience is sometimes your failures, because that's where you can kind of be picked up. That's where God can reach down and teach you something. Because sometimes I'm just too stupid to listen. Let's just say it that way. And if I listen the first time, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I would have moved on. But thank God that even though I messed up, he was able to reach down. He was able to teach me something. Something that I really needed to know that was going to carry me. I made the previous example talking about my friends and all the, all the things. Like I said, I, I used to be the bad influence. Then I turned around and they were my bad influence. And I had so many opportunities that I could have witnessed. I, I shouldn't have gone back to those friends. We've heard that preach before. The friends that are your bad influence, you shouldn't go back to them when you get saved thinking that you can change them, thinking that you can do things like that. Because like I said, I had no backbone. And so when, the, when it got down to the questions, I had nothing to tell them. But since I put myself in that situation, since I ignored everything I've been hearing all my life, I should have at least went to the Word and you know, prayed at least a little bit. A little bit. I mean, you can pray for five minutes. It, that really won't kill you. That really won't kill anybody. Not that I know of. Amen. It won't kill anybody. Amen. Five minutes can turn into ten minutes, can turn into fifteen minutes, can turn into a house full Amen. on Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you take some obedience. Saul, first Samuel, chapter thirteen. Verses eight. That's what we'll start with. Tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed, but Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered, burnt, offered the burnt offering. It came to pass as soon as he had made an end of the offering, the burnt offering. Behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days of the and that the Philistines gathered themselves together in Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. 
For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. The Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Getting back to my example of my friends. God is going to move no matter what. God's hand is going to move. Amen. Getting back to, like I was talking about, not being a strong witness, not having really that backbone because of just things I could have done that were easy, really, that I just didn't do. Well, because of my lacking, because of what I wasn't doing, God had to act because if left amongst these people, My best friend, like I said, atheist. These were the kind of people I hung out with because I didn't really know many other people. And I was like, well, you, you feel safe with the things you know. You feel safe with the things you know, the people you know. So I hung around them and hung around them to the point it was starting to affect me again. Things that I used to be so strong about, all of a sudden they were finding their way weaseling in there. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. Amen. It, it doesn't take it to happen. It can take overnight if you just let it. Honestly, it can't. you got to hold strong. So what does God do? Well, He takes them out of my way. And I looked at it as a blessing. I was like, oh, thank God, because now all these influences. Then, years later, you look at some of the things you see on Facebook, or you look at whatever you see. <coughs> I've had to unfriend so many people now. I, I, my Whoever has Facebook in this room, you're pretty much the only ones I have on Facebook. Like Sarah says, hey, yeah, I know you got Facebook. <laughs> Y'all um, the only people I know. Church people is really the only people I know. The only people I, I want to get around because, Amen. honestly, I don't, I don't need the world for anything. I don't need anything from the world. This is really just a stepping stone to the other side. But see, I thought about it. It's like... I had them so close at one time that I could really do something. I could really maybe make an impact, whereas they didn't have an impact in their life. Some of them, all kinds of situations, can't go into the details, but you know the situations. You've seen them all yourself. You've been in them yourself. And now that chance I had to do something, well, now they're scattered abroad left to do whatever they do. See whoever they see. You see, if Saul had but waited on God and followed what God had commanded, Samuel said the kingdom would have been established forever. Now, I'm not saying I would have had a kingdom witnessing to those friends of mine. Not, nothing like that, no. But there would have been just a few more souls Honestly, I, I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic about it. I hope something that I did, something someone else does, will make a change in their life. But what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? Samuel said, Now the kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. I don't want the rocks to cry out because of my failure, because of my disobedience. I don't want anything in anyone take my praise. I don't want anyone to praise in my place. I'm going to worship the Lord on my own. I'm going to worship Him if I've got a room full of people. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to lean on God. I'm going to trust on God because it's the only thing sturdy I can lean on. Amen. I'm not going to be disobedient. I'm not going to just make blatant refusals to because I want eternity to be pleasant, happy. One where I get to be with those who have gone before me. One where I don't suffer. One where I don't have to worry about it. i got a dislocated vertebra and a pinched nerve. That's no fun. I don't want to go live through life with any of that kind of stuff. Only to wind up in more agony. 
Saul, he just leaned on to his own understanding. He said, oh, if I don't do this quick, if I don't do this quick, it's all going to be over. Obedience is better than sacrifice, amen. You know, there's, like I said, there's so many examples. The world thinks of as Christian. And I can only imagine their but that's why we've got to be strong ourselves. That's why yeah. we have got to take the stand where everyone else is basically that cross they were carrying. They just shrugged it off and shook hands with the devil. So, you know what? I was getting a little too heavy on my shoulders anyway. I need to I'm gonna shrug that off because it's a lot easier. Oh, it's not easy on the other side. It's not easy on the other side if you haven't made it. It's not easy to walk through life unless you've got God, unless you've got that firm foundation, unless you've got that back. Yeah. Right. And so, in closing, I just want to, I would really want you to think about it. When you have somebody, it, it, may be a, it may be the kind of person where you just, you almost, like Jonah, I don't know if I really want to talk to this one. This one's always got something smart to say whenever I talk to him. He's always got something to shoot back at me. It makes me angry. It makes me angry whenever I try and talk to him. I end up more frustrated than I do satisfied. Amen. you got to still witness. you got to yes. press yes. forward. Because in the end, it's going to amount to something. Praise God. Yeah, the sticks and the stones, they may break my bones, but worse will never hurt me. There is nothing, nothing that the world can do that can shake my faith. My faith is what I make it between me and God. There is nothing else. There is no one else who can take my place when I die. So I'm going to praise God. I'm going to have faith. I am not going to fall away because of something the world's done or said. And when it comes down to obedience, if I don't follow what God said, if I don't follow what He's leaned, pressed on my heart, Somebody else may end up taking my place. Somebody else, I mean, I don't want the rocks to cry out. I, 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 I want to be obedient. I want to be used to God. You, you gotta be. You gotta have that kind of passion because otherwise, God's just gonna move. And he's gonna be like, I gave you a chance, but you didn't take it. We've got. To close with